Hi, this is Anvil Studio X video, and today we are going to see UI automation in Studio X. So let's see what we're trying to do today. So we have this Excel file, which has few rows, which contains data of, of few members, which has first name, last name, company name, role in the company, phone number, and all of these fields. And then we have a web application where we want to put this data from the Excel file. So you can see, so we have the first name, uh, the company name, email address. So all of these fields from Excel file, we have to fill it in this particular web application. And the challenge here is the position of the fields, which you see right now on the screen, keeps changing. So if the first name is appearing here once, it's going to appear somewhere else on the screen for the next time. And then we have to click on the Submit button after each, after each row we are when we are entering the data. So let's see how the bot performs and what are the various methods to improve the performance of bot in the UI automation. So jump to Studio X and first let's connect with the Excel file for which we will use a resource called use Excel file and give the path where your Excel file is locally saved. So this is the path and let's give it to the bot and this is the file we're going to use. So once it has connected with your application, so now as you can see uh, that you know the reference is Excel, so uh, you may or you may not change it. And you do not have to change any of the fields as well. So once it has connected, now you have to iterate through each of these rows, or you can say you have to loop through each row, for which we will use an activity call for each Excel row. So there you go, for each Excel row is what you're gonna drag it here. Make sure you are using this activity inside the use Excel file resource. So, yeah, so your current row represents what is the current row being processed. So first iteration would be this row. In the second iteration, this will become your current row. And where you want to iterate is what you have to give. So in the Excel sheet one is where you want to iterate. Then it has headers. It means that the first row of the Excel is headers and not the data. So the bot will skip the first row and will start picking up the records from the second row. Now, once you have done iterating the Excel file, next thing you have to do is connect with the application and start entering the data, for which we will use a resource called Use Application Browser. Put it inside for each Excel row because for each row, we want to perform this action. So that is why we have to put it inside this particular action. So now inside the Use Application Browser, indicate where your application is. So click on indicate application and you can see the blue so blue window has appeared. Click anywhere on the screen and it will capture the, the URL and the screenshot of the screen. Now the next thing we have to do after we have connected with the application is start putting the data. So for which we will use an activity called type into when you want to type the data into the application. So type into is what you're going to drag it inside the use browser. So anything you are performing with the application, which is web application. So all of these actions should be within this, uh, this resource. Okay. So indicate where you're going to type. So the first thing we're going to type is in here, which is the first name. So this is your target and this will be your anchor. So Studio X automatically identifies anchor for you and you can pick it also if you're not sure so but we are sure that this is our anchor so since we have you know so many uh the you can say these uh the fields where you have to put the data which are very much similar so to uniquely identify where actually the first name should go we are giving a reference name which is first name also even if the first name this particular field changes the position anywhere on the screen it will identify based on the anchor so click on the confirm button once you're sure and from where we have to pick the file is from your excel's current row and the first name column so your first name will be picked up from your current row and first name column and the next thing similarly we have to use the same activity to type into other fields so we will say company name this is a target and it will automatically identify the anchor. We are done. Click on the confirm button. And the company name is coming from your row and this particular uh, column. Then we have another type into to be used. Indicate again. So this is where you have to type. And this will become your anchor automatically. So you are done. Click on the confirm button. Email again you have to pick. So your current row email column is from where you have to take the value. Then again, type into then click here 
and click on this particular area and the role in company should be the anchor this time yes and click on confirm then click on the plus button your current row and the role in company column is from where you have to pick the data then again drag in the type in two and last name is what we have to enter now so now this is your anchor click on the confirm button last name you have to pick from your current row last name column then use another type into and you have to repeat the same type into actions for the other fields as well so this now this time we are doing for the phone number now and this becomes your anchor click on confirm click on the plus button and again current row and the phone number column is what we have to use now and this is our last type into to enter the address identify the target and this is our anchor click on the confirm button address is from where you have to pick is current row address and the last thing we have to do, do is click on the submit button so we are going to use an activity called click so there you go and indicate so this is your submit button click on submit button so if we are done with the automation steps right so everything we are done we are iterating through each row and for each of the row data we are putting the data inside this application one thing we have to make sure right now is or to check is all our activities are right now using an input method called same as browser we will check out the other uh, the other options as well and see how the performance performance of the bot is impacted so yeah uh, let's do it and for which let me go back and click on the start button and click on the run button here so there you go the bot should go as you can see uh, the the first name last name and company name all of these fields uh, will keep changing the values uh, while you are putting the data after each submit button and once it click on submit you can see the positions has been changed but it is putting the data correctly because we have used the anchor and the target relationship so this is the best part of the ui part ui automation it uses a unified target approach so yeah it uses the the, the images and uh, reliable selectors to identify your your uh, fields on your web application so you can see the the even though the fields are keep changing the positions but the email is going into the, the correct uh, position, last name in the correct position, even the phone number now, and even now the address is going into the current, you know, the correct position. So this is how the bot uh, is perfectly performing right now. So let the bot run. And so for each of the uh, Excel row data, uh, the bot will enter the values. So Let's see how much time the bot is going to take in this particular method, which is input method as use as application as browser. This is the default method when you're working with the UI automation. But if you want to tweak the performance of the robot, you can use other options, which we just now saw, which is simulate and the hardware events and other methods. Uh, all of these methods have their own pros and cons. Uh, sometimes uh, any method does not work with the, the shortcut keys. So if you want to use the shortcut keys, you cannot use a particular method. Uh, so similarly, even with, with you know, if you want, you want to work in the, in the foreground and if you want to work in the background. So similarly, based on your requirement, you can choose which type of input method you want to use. So right now, this is the 10th round you can see which is being processed. And we have the phone number and the address being submitted. And this is the, the overall time we have. So let's try the other method, which is simulate, click and the type. So let's choose each activity and go to the properties panel and input mode, make it to simulate. Okay, now you can see there is a warning, the click before typing property is relevant only for the hardware events input mode for all the other methods not taken into the considerations. Okay, that's just a warning, uh, so you can actually ignore it, or maybe sometimes if you click on the none, the warning goes. So now, similarly, we are going to do the all the all the settings similarly, and again click on the simulate, and there you go. And yeah, the warning again appears, so you can 
suppress this warning by doing the none. So that's not a, that's not an error or it's going to stop your bot. It's just a warning. Again, if you choose simulate type into, you can choose it as none. And then you have another, which is again, go to properties, make it simulate type into, and make it none. And okay, I chose double by mistake, so it should be none. Then similarly, another and make it as simulate. And again, make it none. And type into the phone number, make it simulate and click on the none. Again, you go there and simulate and this is your none. And again, your click, right? So make it as simulate click. Okay, so because we are doing the type into and the clicks only, so that is why we are using the simulate action. Uh, but actually when you're using so many keystrokes or you are, you are using the keyboard shortcuts, then maybe the simulate may not work that well. So uh, they, all of these methods have their own pros and cons as I said earlier. So make sure that you're using the current method when you're interacting with the UI. So now we have to start our next processing. So there you go. I'll click on the start and click on the run here and let's go back to the screen. And the bot should start now. It has started. There you go. The bot is entering the data now. So you can see it is not actually uh, earlier. You you can actually see that as it was typing the the whole, uh, you know, the the sentence or the letter or or anything on the screen. So right now it is actually you can see it's just appearing very quickly. Uh, as compared to your previous run. So, so the simulate can actually also work in the background. So if you want the UI automation uh, to run in the in the background while you are also doing something in your in your system, then you can use a simulate click or a simulate type into. So these type of input messages where you can use in the UI automation. And we have the eighth entry being done right now. And this is our ninth entry being done. So you can see uh, it per worked perfectly fine with the anchor and the target relationships. And this is a 10th and this is a time. As you can see, it is comparatively uh, less to the, to the previous one which we used, which was the default method. Uh, so similarly, you can now also explore the other, other methods also, also with the hardware events. And if you go and check it out, so yeah, you can also so yeah. Similarly, you can actually explore the other methods, uh, which is the the hardware events and the Windows message. Uh, so yeah, you can compare the, the timing of all of these input methods and work what works best in what scenario. That's all in the UI automation. Thank you.